was stuck here. The cops won't bother me. You see here, the fork calipers are pretty wet. And here's the fork seals, look at this. All wet and it just drips down. Massively leaky. It's dripped down. <clears throat> the brake caliper is all oily. So let's get started on getting these fork seals done. First, you have to remove your brake calipers. There's two bolts that hold the calipers. Now, let's get the left side and do those. There's a couple more bolts on the left side that hold the speedometer cable. You'll have to undo those as well. One of the things I'm going to do is strap the caliper and tie it to some place because you don't want it to dangle because it could damage the brake line. Now you're going to remove this bolt. It's a pinch bolt that holds the axle for the front. We're going to have to remove the front tire. You're going to use a 12 millimeter tool like here. You're going to put it here and that's how you're going to loosen the axle. Suzuki does this. It's uh, quite clever. I like it. It's very simple to remove. And when you remove the axle, push up on the rim and the wheel and lift it out. As you can see, the axle is out and I'm going to regrease it. And now I can put the front tire away. I have a jack underneath the bike as well. Now I'm going to undo the brake lines from the brake calipers and I'm going to put everything suspended, get the left side, make sure you get these little bolts, do not lose them. One thing I do sometimes is put the bolts back to their place. Now I'm going to tie the caliper up to my auxiliary lights and now we have to undo this bolt. There's a bolt up on the top for each leg. And you don't have to remove the bolt. You can just uh, loosen it as much as possible and kind of just leave it there. That way you don't have to keep searching for the bolts. Now let's get the left one. Same sort of deal. Be careful with the plastic. Undo it. And now you have two bolts right here in the lower triple tree and it's a little bit tougher you do not have to remove the plastic you can get a small wrench in there loosen it up remove the two bolts and I usually like to stick them back on there so I don't lose them and as soon as you release it and uh, you'll see the both legs will come down and here's the bolts I'm gonna put this away and now I raise the front a little bit using my jack and I can just slide the whole front end out. It's a pretty easy fix. And now we're going to remove the front hugger. So here are the fork seals. You can see they're pretty leaky. But you know, this is something that most people should probably do a little bit more. Change the fork oil. And to do that, normally you can service the entire fork. You're going to need a six millimeter and this is a 32 millimeter socket you're gonna put the six millimeter here at the very bottom of the fork that's gonna allow you to completely disassemble the forks the top part and the lower part and now I'm gonna undo the top make sure that you hold the nut as you're twisting because this thing could fly out and hit you in the eye and you want to just Put your hand around it and push down a little bit and unscrew it and hold on to it because once it comes out it wants to squirt out because there's a spring in the fork so here's the top put it aside make sure you know the order that you take things out here is a spacer and then you have a washer And I'm going to remove the oil, the old oil, and you can see the spring right there. There we go. Make sure you pump the fork a couple of times to get rid of all the oil in there. 
And you want to clean the floor up really well. I like to keep everything nice and clean as I'm doing this because I don't want to have to redo this again. So you can see the oil. It's been there for about a year. So I'm doing this. I'm going to remove the bolt completely before I just loosened it. And there's that bolt. And now I can remove this, uh, I believe it's called the piston and the spring. And I'm just going to put the bolt back on this. That way I don't lose it. Now it's the process of cleaning everything. I like to make sure I wash everything. I could get like better springs. You know, sometimes people like to upgrade their springs to progressive springs, but I usually stick with the stock. Um, now this is the dust seal. The dust seal get a very small flat screwdriver and just kind of bring it up. Normally this is not damaged so you can reuse it, but with fork seal kits, it usually comes with a seal and the, the, the dust cap. Now this is the clip, put a small screwdriver in there and just push it in and bring it out and just bring it up. This is how you remove the seal and you just have to kind of work your way and now you get the seal out. That's the fork seal, that's the, that's the part that takes all the labor to get out. And there's a washer there and you have that spacer and then you have another Teflon thing. Now I like to put a piece of uh, paper on the floor that way I don't get my garage too dirty and then do the exact same thing for the other fork. It's the same sort of system you know it's both forks are the same it's a conventional fork. This is the fork oil I'll be using it is Maxima fork oil I got it a cycle gear 15 weight uh, the weight is pretty important. Some people like to go up or down with the weight. I'll stick with 15 and it was only $9. They make more expensive oils, but I don't really see any, any benefit from using very expensive oils. This is the grease I'll be using. Uh, it's Bell Ray and it's waterproof grease. I think the important thing is just having waterproof grease. We'll look up the a, a diagram for the forks of a V-Strom or whatever bike you're working on, but it's usually all the same. So this part is down on the fork leg. So then there's this uh, this uh, ring here. I don't know what's called. It's a Teflon coated ring. It's very important, and then. You have this uh, washer here. It's also, I believe, a Teflon coated thing. Then you have a large washer. And this is pretty important because I messed up the order a few times. This little cup goes in here. And that's what goes at the bottom. And this holds the bottom of the fork leg to this. What happens is that when you remove the the fork and everything, what I tend to do is clean it up as, as well as I can because I don't want any dirt going inside my new oil. So let's first clean up all of this. This is the bottom of the fork. So that steel, the cylinder, is going to be going in here. and. Keep in mind, you just have to make sure that everything is nice and clean. I like to, if I'm going to remove the forks, I want to make sure that all of it is clean before I put it on. So this is the dust cap. You can tell it's a dust cap because it kind of looks like a mushroom or a hat or something like that. And this is the assembly of the fork. We have to put it together. Now that we cleaned it, we'll put the bolt at the bottom. The bolt basically holds tight the bottom and the top part of the fork. Key and tighten this hand tight for now. You, it's not going to go anywhere. We have our, our assembly of the fork completely done. The part that's um, top is the smaller version of this 
This is the top part. The part that actually hits the oil, the bottom, is much wider here. And this here is the top part, which is the smaller diameter groove. And when you twist it around, the part, the, the wider one, is where the oil is going to be. And one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to just grease it up. It's um, waterproof grease. I like to kind of push it into this um, little groove here. And I have my fork seal all greased up. I'm going to look at it, see which is the bottom part. And there's also a little bit of a, a bevel to the top part, which is very nice. And you just fit it with your hand here. And you see the fork goes up and down. So I'm just going to bring it all the way up. I'm just going to push this all the way. And I'm just going to push it in. I'm just going to wipe this grease off. And this is the dust seal. We're not going to put that just yet. Another thing we're going to be doing after we drive the fork seal in is put this clip that's going to retain everything in there. So normally to drive the fork seal into the tube, so we have all our stuff here, in order for the seal to have a good seal on there, it has to be hammer down quite a bit and there are special specialty tools that let you do this job but I don't have them and bike shops would have them but there is a cheaper a much better way to do it for the home mechanic like me because I don't want to buy specialty tools and normally you don't do fork seals very much so I don't have specialty tools so this is what I have piece of PVC pipe and I've cut a little bit out of it it's going to be a different diameter for different bikes, so check with your uh, di you know, uh, manufacturer or whatever. But this is what I'm going to be using. I have the tube. I just drop this into here. So using the PVC plastic and these two halves that I cut, you are going to be driving that seal down. It, it works better when there's somebody to help you, but I found I can do this all by myself. So you just take that piece and you just hammer it down try to go slow the point is not to scratch the fork it's just to drive that little bit of plastic down and there's going to be a midway point that you will need to drive it past so you can put that retaining clip on there hammer it down a few times until the seal is set so it's a little bit hard to see but Inside of here, in this part of the fork, there's a little indentation that goes around here. And you just have to drive the fork seal past that because then you put a clip on there to hold it. After the seal is in, you need to put this clip on there and it's gonna go into that groove on the fork. Push it down with a flat screwdriver and you'll hear it click into place. So to put this, this is the dust seal, you just slide it from the top down. Make sure that the tube is nice and clean. Run it again through your hands and get another cloth. Make sure that everything's clean. The last thing you want is to put some debris down there and cause another leak. So now that we have the, uh, the top cap, you just push it in. And with this system, that should be good for another year or two. This is a pretty decent conventional fork. It's nothing special. And if you know how to do one fork, you know how to do all of them. The system I usually use is I get the fork and I push it up and I put oil in it. And then I measure it from the top of the fork to the bottom where the, it hits the oil. And then it's like, let's say it's four inches or three inches. And then you get that amount for each leg, that way it's balanced. What I'm going to do today, I'm gonna to take a cup, 
and I'm going to measure this according to the specifications for each leg and according to Suzuki it's 524 milli milliliters or 17.7 .7 to 18.5 fluid ounces and I'm going to put about 18 ounces on here and I'm going to put it in each fork leg. I'm not really sure which system it works best, but this is a system that seems to work okay and I've never used it, but I've seen people do it, so I'm going to use this system. So now add the oil slowly. Make sure you don't spill it. If you spill it, then you have to remeasure, so try to go slow. It helps to have a lip on the cup. I don't, so I'm being a little bit more careful. I'm going to add the amount of oil that's needed and this oil is very smelly so keep that in mind so now pump the fork a few times to get the air bubbles out and you're going to notice it's a lot tougher to move up and down but you need to do this a few times just to bleed out the system now let's add our spring drop it in slowly so it won't make a splash And I'm going to pump it up a few more times. And now it is time for the washer that we removed. And you just drop it in there. And now we have our spacer. We're going to drop the spacer in there. The spacer is going to be almost to the very tip of the top of it. And now there's some threads on the inside. And that's how we're going to close the cap. This is pretty it sometimes it could get a little bit difficult you have to push down remember you're pushing down on the spring and then you're gonna push down and pull up on that sleeve of the, the steel and push it down as soon as you get through the first thread you're in so this is how you replace your fork seals on your bike and I really encourage everybody to do your own fork seals I'm not a great mechanic but the idea that I can do this by myself and save myself like $600 just to replace fork seals, it's kind of a testament on itself. It's an easy job, but if you take it to a bike shop, it's going to cost you a whole lot more money because they charge you by the hour. And I'm not really sure how much it would cost in your area, but here in the DC area, you're looking at like $600 for a fork seal. The part itself, it's only like $20. So it's really the time to remove the forks that's um, time consuming. Hopefully this helped everybody who wanted to do a fork seal. It's a simple process. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.